Hey, Dan. What's up, Alex? <laughs> How's it going? Another game night? Another game night. Woo! I've been really excited about this one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all great. They're all great, but for some reason, I was just like, I have been waiting to bring out this game for a while. Okay. I'm yeah. curious. I talked about it a couple episodes ago. Okay. So I'm super excited. So we're playing a game we've already played. Playing a game that you've heard of before. Okay. And played once. Anyways. So yes, we're back for another Boards and Bottles episode. The show where we pair excellent board games with exceptional tasty drinks. Oh, okay. Yeah, and as we always say, please like, subscribe, most importantly. Um, give us comments. Let us know what we're doing right, what we need to work on. And we're, we're new at this. We can do better. I know. Yeah, we love your comments, <laughs> but we love your love and support and feedback. Thank you. All right, so let's get right into it. The game I brought this week is none other than Raw. Oh. Chun, 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 chun. Raw. I love, yeah, hi. Uh, we love raw. We do. I think it's actually come to our game table uh, almost every week. Yeah, yeah, we can, we we can just squeeze it in. keep squeezing it in, because yeah, again, it's a super fast, I think two to five, 45 minutes, yeah. two to five players, 45 minutes. And even, even new people that haven't played it before, I mean, it's easy to teach. You can teach this thing in 10 minutes. What's amazing is um, how simple it is. Mm -hmm. But how thematic it is an auction game. And it's simple. It is. You follow the stars, and Ra comes out and moves this as it goes along. It's very simple. Everybody gets a player board, and they have a player board that has three suns on it. Right? Three suns. And they have your bidding power. Think of it like that. You start with a board, and it'll tell you, you get 14, 8, 7, yeah, whatever. Discs with with numbers on them. Ooh, you want to look at them? We can They're right here. And so that, these are the suns. And so yeah, number ten. So what happens is everybody has different numbers, right, in sequential mm -hmm. order, uh, but varied. And when you start drawing tiles out of this bag, this these tiles, bag. this giant bag. Now I have the Pharaoh expansion, so yes, I mean that. Yes, you're gonna get a little envy when you look at this thing if you I, get I do the normal copy, but yes. You get tiles. Chunky this. So many tiles. And this is the one that makes all the auctions start, unless you decide you want to make Raw happen. But what you're doing in this game, really, is you're like influencing pharaohs, you're building monuments, you're farming the Nile, you're building culture, technology, all through whatever tiles you're actually getting. So what happens in the game is, across this track, people in order are pulling out these tiles, and you keep kind of stacking them up, stacking them up, and it keeps getting more tasty and better and better. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to make sets. It's a set collection game at heart. But the auction aspect comes in when Raw is drawn, because then everybody in order gets to use their son, one of their sons, to bet if you want to. Or yep. everybody might pass. But and I'll tell you, as it goes along, there are more and more exciting tiles, and then everyone's like, ooh, I want that, I want that. Yeah, and when, so when you bet, when, when an auction is triggered, you're not betting on one tile. You're betting on all of the tiles that are revealed in the board at this point. So the cool thing, one of the really cool things in this game is on your turn, there's three things you can do. There's only three things you can do. You can pull a tile out of this bag, you can use one of these god tiles, and you're just going to take this tile and you're going to swap it with any... You're going to take one out of the display and throw your god tile away. Yep. Or you can... Where is it? It's in here somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's right. You keep it in the bag. I keep it in the bag. You can invoke raw. <laughs> so you can say, these tiles out here are sweet enough. I want to trigger an auction right now. Or you can be like... I I don't think it's sweet enough for me, but I think it's sweet enough for this guy over here. I'm going to trigger it. I'm going to make him blow through his tiles. That is a tactic I use quite often. Awesome. Because say I have the 10 and Dan's over here sitting with the 13. If I let it get out to where there's like seven tiles on the board, mm -hmm. you know he's going to jump on it. So bully. sometimes... Total bully. Yeah. It's so rude. So sometimes you just call it early. When you're excited enough about it that you might use that... 10 mm -hmm. but he's like oh i'll use that and i like getting everyone to chomp at it early mm -hmm. so that then if you're one of the only people with one left then he's out after he spends his three sons and for the rest of the round he doesn't even get to bid on anything that's right he doesn't have a chance to bid on anything and so another strategy one that i use a lot is when, <laughs> where i see people with a lot of lower tiles i'm like these guys 
they're, 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 they're going to feel lucky if they get any tiles. So I'm going to trigger these uh, auctions all the time when it's just a couple tiles out. And they're like, oh, I'll spend my two or my five on that. All of a sudden, they've got no tiles left. And I'm sitting strong. And I'm just going to get tile after tile after tile. I don't win this game much. So don't take this as advice. <laughs> so the other thing is that if he were to buy this with the 13, the 13 replaces whatever sun is on the board. Yeah, so we start off top. with a one in the board. Yeah. And so whoever wins that first auction, uh, their tile, whatever they spent, is going to get swapped out with the one in the middle. So say it's the 13 and he takes all those great tiles that come out. And now get a one. whoever gets whatever tiles they are gets to keep this one. It is turned face over, but this game is played in three rounds. Exactly. So they will get to use that as buying power the next round round which is huge to be the person with the highest at the end it is it's miserable one of our friends steven it seems like every time he wins these auctions and he's doing well and then he looks at his stuff the next round and he's got two three four it's like what are you gonna do with that steven he's gonna <laughs> wait till the end exactly so and it, it and it is super fast playing especially because you're just trying to get sets and most of the tiles score in that round, mm -hmm. but there are some tiles on the other side of the board that score at, at the and very the, end of the game. Yeah. The monuments score at the very end. Exactly. And, and, and the, the board is super user-friendly. There's icons on here. I mean, it might look complicated on here. There's really seven places to score. You're going to score six of them at the end of round one, six after round two, set all seven after round three. And that is the end of the game. Did we mention that victory points are scored with <laughs> these? Oh my That's gosh, ridiculous. these are amazing. It comes with these metal, wonderful, wonderful pieces. All the hieroglyphs. That's so exciting. It is, and you're gonna see, you're gonna get these uh, these co coins. I, I don't even know what you call these. These are so cool. Hieroglyphs. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna get these throughout the game. You're gonna put them face down, so nobody really knows how many points anybody else has. So you, you can see a big stack in front of them. You can kind of follow along throughout the game, but it, it is it is hidden point totals. All right, Dan. Time to explain. What do we pair this with? Uh, so we're looking at an Egypt game. Egyptian game? Uh, I don't know any Egyptian... And, and I should have said, this is by Reiner Knizia. Oh. Which makes a lot of sense why we love it. Mathematician extraordinaire. Yes, and so many games. Dozens yes. and dozens and dozens and dozens. So I'm thinking maybe some, like, Oasis water. Or... Oasis water. Like, yes. just the most refreshing water you've ever had? Yes, with maybe, like, a base layer of sand. Ooh. I'll take the sand out of it, but I will give you some Oasis water. <laughs> okay. So one thing I have heard is people have said, man, you wear a lot of Calusa hats. Well, Calusa is one of my favorite breweries. And it's They're awesome. a shame. They're local to us, right? They're right down the street. And it's a shame that I haven't had anything brought a pairing yet with them. So I had to end that today. Oh, okay. So we're going to drink a beer, Dan. And yeah. you know why beer pans pair so well with raw? Uh, No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't help you there. We don't prepare for this thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Spontaneity. Egypt. E e the Egyptians were the first to really create beer, right? Thousands okay. and thousands of years ago, we found, you know, all the information. We see that they are making beer. And beer actually was so prevalent that they preferred drinking beer than water. And the reason is because you go to the Nile, you know, there's all the animal oh, waste yeah. and everything like that in the Nile. You can get sick off of water sure well when they're heating that water and they usually threw bread in right yeah beer made, a, bread. made a made a kind of beer substance right and then yep. they would mix fruit though with it fruit juices okay so it's not like the beer we think of today it was almost you know it was fruity. really fruity okay. smoothie almost but anyways so there's so many beers of Calusa i love i thought about doing a whole pairing of all kinds of beers but i really need to stick to one of their classic fruit beers and it beer. just came out and it is the cabana cooler and it even says on it fruit beer oh. how about that so there you go dan wow all right one for you and one for me i don't know if i've had a fruit beer before this this is this is new for me all right fruit beer with tangerine and pineapple tangerine wow. and pineapple it's gonna taste like a white claw no <laughs> way better cabana cooler by calusa awesome cheers cheers 
Ooh, yeah, it does smell good. Mm. But to me, I think about it's super tart. Almost tastes so, tastes a little grapefruity, but that's the pineapple. It's uh it's what you would expect um, in a fruit beer. So I can't say that like it's my type of beer, but it's very thematic when we think of, you know, I mean, Egyptians were paid in wages in beer. Yeah. Right? They've shown. So, I mean, it's something that I think is so integral to that Egyptian, ancient Egyptian culture in the Old Kingdom and such, right? Definitely. Yeah, this this is like total summer beer. Like, this reminds me of like being a kid and drinking like Five Alive. I don't know if you had that. <laughs> I don't know if you guys had that, but Five Alive. This is like a juice box, man. It is. This is uh, very tasty. This is really refreshing. Yeah, 5%. So... Just like this is a fun, light game, um, you know, even though it can feel like, oh, you're really wanting something. It's a wonderful auction concept about it. The raw tile helps you to garble up something if you're lucky enough to get that. Yep. I love it. Refreshing game. Color scheme even matches. Man. Look at that. We are rocking at all cylinders right now, my friend. We are. All right. So this is what I brought for tonight, and I think everyone will love it. Probably bring us down. Oh, oh, oh. No, not at all. Uh, let's get this game out of here. Wow, this is a lot. This is a lot. It is. Freaking Pharaoh Edition. The Pharaoh Our Edition. Stuff. Yar. All right, bring out yours. What you got? All right, so what I brought, I just brought something light and fun. Yeah? Get money out of here. <laughs> my hieroglyphs. All right, so I brought a t shirt of one of my favorite bands. Me first in the Gimme Gimme's. <laughs> that was a good good concert. It was. It was. And they're so good. And if you don't know who they are, give them a listen. They will be your next favorite band. Next I, favorite cover band, for sure. Definitely. I brought a game that also rocks. On Tour. Yes! So in On Tour, you are a... You're the rock band or you're the tour manager? You're the tour manager. Tour manager. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, either way. Either way. Uh, so what you're doing in On Tour is you are plotting your tour throughout the USA or Europe. Your band is touring, and you've got to come up with the coolest route to score you the most points on your along the way of your tour. And you get to roll dice. Yeah, so let's, let's dice. take a look at this. We've got, we've got some cards. For example, this is the US uh, right here. We've got a couple of these big old chonky dice that we're going to roll. And... It gives you regions, which is a lot of fun. So it'll say north, south, east, west, south, east, northwest, and it kind of tells you certain states as well. Every one of the states is listed in here if you're playing the U.S. side, which is nice. Definitely, and I'm, yeah. So here, we've got a map right here, and this is the map of the U.S., and we've got all, it's broken down by region, it's broken down by state, and what's going to happen is we're going to start off with a couple seated states, and then we're going to have a couple that are face up right here. So we're going to have some states that are face up. Um, you're going to see we have the west, we have the south, we have the east, and there's some states that are indicated on here. What's going to happen is we're going to take these dice, we're going to roll them. So for example, I got a three and a zero. This can make 30, and it can make three. So what you're going to do is you are going to write in a number on this. We've got some lovely dry erase markers. And we're going to fill in the number three in the west, south, or east. And then we're going to enter the number 30 in the west, south, or east. And what you're trying to do is um, if you're trying to make the a route for your tour. And the route's going to go in sequential order. And you're going to try to hit as many states as possible if you put the thing... If you fill in the bubble of the state that's indicated on the card, you're going to put a circle around it, get more points, and you're just going to get points for however many states you can hit along the way. I love this because it is that simple. I mean, he it explained is. it in all of, like, I think 60 seconds. Yeah, you guys are ready to play. It, and that's it. <laughs> and, and, I mean, when you start out the first time you play this game, it is going to be just a, oh, I got 18 points. Yep. And that's fine because you do get Pimps out certain places, not pimped out, but like you're. you're you <laughs> That's get... an interesting. Uh, <laughs> no, but, you <laughs> but you can't. You can't get. You know. You uh, you you break you get off. Where, out, yeah, yeah you, you block yourself out, and yeah. so and so you have to kind of go around sometimes, and, and and thankfully there are times where there's like two of the exact same thing rolled, and then you're able to draw a star. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of like a wild, and it'll help you out to go. Yep. and get around where you need to get to. Definitely. And uh, 
so, so it, it to, to me, this game is so amazing because it is so simple. And when you start it, you're like, there's so many spaces. There's nothing to this game. Like, what am I even doing here? What am I trying to do? And you get like three rounds into this thing and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I can go there, I can go there, I can go there. If I go there, then I can't. How many options do I have here? And your brain is just evaluating all of these alternatives and you're trying to figure out what's coming next. And it turns into this really, really cool puzzle, really cool thematic puzzle. Um, and it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful game. And you expect people to roll certain things. And you do. You go like, well, obviously somebody will have to roll an 18, a 17, a teen at some yep. point, And it'll be great for me. Yep. Because then I can just map that in. And then nobody rolls it. And the or whole game, it's they roll 38, it, They 38, roll it, 45. and the cards that are up don't allow you to put it where you need it. Oh, it's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But not frustrating yeah. enough to not let you play the game. And no, it's quick no. and it's fun. It's a roll and write, and then you can just scratch it off and play again. It is. It, absolutely. So much fun. Now, what would we pair? Like, what is a rock star drink? We should oh, drink with this. Just a rock star. A straight up just like a monster kind a of monster thing? rock star. <laughs> yeah, it can do no. It. You know. <laughs> a little uh Mm. We here at Boards and Bottles a little more health conscious. We don't we don't drink those high sugar energy drinks. No, distilled spirits. It is for us. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see what you brought. Oh, oh! So this guy right here, this is Heaven's Door. Now I I, I got to explain this a little bit about why it's this drives so well with this. Yeah. One of the things, so this is a special edition of Heaven's Door. Heaven's Door is a distillery that is owned by Bob Dylan. Rockstar extraordinaire Bob Dylan. That Bob Dylan. Uh, Bob Dylan is also a master welder, so on all the bottles you'll see it has this like funky looking ironworks on it. They're based on sculptures of his, which I think is pretty cool. That's exactly uh, he also made the distillery with the guy that founded Angel's Envy, which is a wonderful bourbon um and also one of the high ups in diageo uh they left and they formed heaven's door so this is a 100 percent rock star bourbon something else that's cool about this we said that this game can be played in the united states and it can be played in europe this particular uh edition of heaven's door was made by the master blender of heaven's door and the master blender of Red Breast Irish Whiskey. Irish! Which is one of my favorite Irish whiskeys, by the way. So, we've all seen bourbon casks going overseas, and they finish Irish whiskey, they finish scotch and ex-bourbon casks. Mm -hmm. We don't really see too much scotch barrels coming back over here, or Irish whiskey barrels coming back over here. Because they have to be first fill for bourbons. It does. So, this is aged 10 years in a first fill American oak cask. And then they took some casks from Red Breast Irish Whiskey, brought them over here, and it's finished 15 months in that. 15 months? 15 months. So this is just shy of a 12-year bourbon. <sighs> Hook me up, Dan. Yeah, definitely. Hook me up. So he to, me, to me, Heaven's Door is a very interesting brand. Their typical offerings I'm not very fond of. But there have been some that have just knocked my socks off. And this is one of them. Rock you like a hurricane. <laughs> Sorry for the singing. You should be. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's why I'm the band manager, Dan. <laughs> All right, so cheers. Oh, Enjoy this cheers. guy. Woo. Oh, yeah. It, it just smells mm. thick and toffee caramel. Oh, wow. That is super, super malty. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about bourbon. Mm. Just caramel, brown sugar. And it just keeps going. It just keeps going. Yeah. That, th this is superb. Awesome whiskey. If if there's any Heaven's Door that you guys have had that you like, th there's been some store picks by us that have been really good as well. Um, but if there's a, a non-unique like brand that you like, Please let us know because, like I said, some of these have been exceptional, and I'd love to figure out which Heaven's Door product is the best for for me. Oh, I like that. Yeah, excellent. I know what is the my tastiest Calusa. 
Oh, yeah. It's called Photorhead, and it is so good. Photorhead? Yeah. It's tasty. We're not drinking that today, though. So I don't think Cabana I'm Cooler. I'm a it fan is. of the uh, Calusa the Colbin. Is uh, one of my favorites in the uh, oh, the, the Matson. Yeah, uh, mm. in this summer I, I was quite on the peace and quiet. Um, oh yeah, uh, kick. Yeah, there's just so many. That's there's... what you love when you like a brewery. You know because you go and you don't just get one style of beer. Exactly. You're and like I... I like this one and I like this one and this one and how do I choose? Exactly. And, and I love so I like craft beers. I do like them a lot. Um, but too many craft breweries I feel get hung up in IPA land. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's there. I'm not an IPA fan. We've talked about it before. There's so many beers out there beyond IPAs, and people just get stuck there. And, like, I want these beer snobs to like my craft beer. Well, guess what? There's beer snobs that don't like IPAs. Sorry, I said it. You're ridiculous. All right, (laughs) so where are we going to rank these? We've got Raw with the Cabana Cooler Fruit Beer. Mm. This one surprised me. Like I didn't, I didn't think I'd like a fruit beer as much as I do like this. I know it's so good though, and raw is fantastic. Um, it's on the quicker cool. side. Uh, one of our last episodes, we were talking about quick games and palate cleansing games. I wouldn't call it a palate cleansing game, but it is a faster one that we work in all the time. It is. It, it's a newer one that we love, so I think that it jumps. Um, it jumps above a camel up to me. You know, that's funny that you say that because that's the exact where I was looking at. The Paleo Camel Up. Yeah. I was looking in that range. I like it. Cool. All right. Coming right in there is Raw and Calusa. I'm sure we'll see Calusa again. Oh, yeah. Undoubtedly. Yeah. All right. Dan, you're on tour with your rock star Heaven's Door. All right. So as much as I like both of these... um, We've just had some ridiculously exceptional picks lately. I know. Um, and I, I'm kind of really looking in that same range uh, for On Tour and The Heaven's Door. Um, Do you think it beats Ready, Set, Bet and your store pick? You know, that's funny because that's kind of where I was looking at it. I, I don't... I think if you put them out, so good. I know. I was, I was going to say, if you put those two games out in front of me, and you said, "Dan, we're playing one tonight. We've got six people here. What are you playing? I'm playing Ready Set Bet. I'm drinking Knob Creek." And I think that's what we always have to go with. Yeah. What is the pairing that you want to bring out right yeah. then? If you could bring out one, like if you could go right. in your room, you know, your game room, come out with one, and right. be like, "This is tonight." All right. I think like probably seven times out of ten, I'd pick Ready, Set, Bet. But you put it ahead of the uh, uh, Sequoia and Goose Island, so you got to be happy about the Hazy moving further down the list. So good for you. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> I mean, I know there's people that like that. <laughs> you, you speak for them, so. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it was exceptional. That was good. That was a great pick, and the rock star-ness of that. Heaven's Door mixed with the Red Breast finish for 15 months is exceptional. Yeah, that's that. Is, this, this is a very good whiskey. Um, I don't, I don't know if you can find it anymore, but <laughs> she does that every time to me. She does. She's always yelling at you. But yeah, I don't know if you can find this one anymore. But if you can, if you like, if you see it on a bar, get a pour of it. It's it's worth it. And if you're ever down uh, in our neck of the woods, um, where you can get clues to send to you, highly recommend. Highly recommend. So tasty. All right, Dan. What do we say? Game hard. Drink responsibly. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Cheers.